How do you guys, it's Luke at Luke's Affordable Paint Service and in this video I'm going to show you how to create landforming for dioramas or game boards, whatever you need. So, in this video, um, it's going to be a st the first of a series. It might be three, maybe four parts. Okay, I did five then. Three, three maybe four parts. Um, taking you through me building a piece. Okay, now the reason I'm building the piece is because I want to learn how to do snow better. Okay, so I'm building something as nice as I can so I can learn to snow it properly and do little snow drifts and even have a mess with uh, snowy water effects as well so semi frozen or you, you get the idea so I thought I'd build like a little dial and I'd take you through each step now we're gonna do it as one video um, and I've just built the landform up and there's some information to get through so I thought what I'll do is I'll put it into short stabs um, probably around 15-20 minutes of video and then that way you can digest it better okay and that way as well I can get more videos out of the same video rather than belting on for an hour and a half okay guys so we'll get the camera down we'll get cracking I won't bore you to death uh, and we'll uh, we'll see what we come up with see you in a bit right so first off stick it down with some acrylic cork best thing about cork once it's stuck down 10 minutes later it's ready to work with all right and it's great <laughs> uh, next thing just get your hot wire cutter and just shape it to the uh, the outside of your board just so it's square and the way that works and it's it's sorry it's out of shot but the wires running across the um, the wood so it stops you taking too much off now creating a rough landform um, take little bits off at a time don't just jump in and take massive chunks off uh, sort of image a riverbank or whatever you're th trying to create and then just take little slithers off and you'll gradually get that fall that you need okay and it's best doing it in little bits because if you take too much out then <laughs> you can't you'd have to start again all right so if you just keep following literally how I'm doing it if you haven't got a hot wire cutter you can use uh, a knife but if you're going to be using a knife, use ex uh, use proper like blue, pink, or some insulation foam rather than this cheap bobbly. Um, this is really cheap crap as well, guys. So if you are going to be using a knife, make sure you use a better quality polystyrene so it's not as uh, rough. Okay. So as you can see, I'm thinking about where I'm going to be placing rocks and making uh, like the outcrops and everything. I know the video is a bit white so some of it might be hard to see but as you can see I've cut just a flat straight piece and the reason I'm cutting them flat straight pieces is so I can stick the rock moulds on okay so I'll just keep this playing uh, so you can see how I form it and then we'll get to putting all the bits on Now, just a quick way of making a natural landform so you get to all the bobbly, the nice movement of earth. You just burn it with a creme brulee burner, all right, or just a blowtorch. Just make sure you've got a window open, guys, it does get a bit smelly, but literally what you're doing is you're getting rid of all them wire marks, you're getting rid of all them straight edges, and what you're left with is a really nice, natural-looking floor, okay? Now the rock moulds that I'm going to be using are from Woodland Scenics. I'm not sponsored, I'm not endorsed by them, I just think they're a bloody good product. You can make your own rock moulds, but that'll be another video, okay guys? Now, working as an ex, uh, an ex labourer, take in a bit of stonemasonry when you're doing this, alright? Um, whatever you pick up, make it work, it's the best way, okay? So. I'm adhering these with a hot glue gun just for speed. Um, you could, best thing to do if you're doing it properly though is use cork like you sealed the um, the foam down with. Reason being, it'll dry a lot harder than uh, hot glue over time. Okay, and it's more permanent. Uh, but for speed, I've just used hot glue. Now, as you can see, I'm trying to make it fit. So I've used a hot wire cutter to shape the back. I'm cutting out with the with the knife just so it I can push it right into the foam so it fits nice. And once I find a, a rock that fits, or it's just will it fit? Make it work. If not, cut a bit of the rock off, break a bit of rock off with an hammer. Um, just make it fit. 
and that's all you've got to do guys okay try and get the rocks as close together as possible so you ain't got as much filling to do and make it so they look like they're all like one piece of rock if you are going to overlap them just make sure that there's no sharp edges which you can quite easily break off with a pair of pliers or a knife and just rough it up all right guys so i'll see you once i've got them all fitted Right, now, because I've used some really cheap polystyrene, um, I'm going to have to cover it with some filler to give it some strength, okay? Um, if you were using proper solid foam, like the blue, pink foams, or Kingspan, like insulation foam, you don't have to do this step. It's just because I've got a big piece of packing foam, uh, and I'm, I'm having to do it this way, alright guys? Now, my filler had slightly gone off, um, so I've just had some PVA glue to make it work properly again and all you've literally got to do is bath this all over the polystyrene um, push it into the gaps and the edges of the rock so the flow onto the floor it doesn't matter if you get it on the rock we'll sort it out in a bit okay and just literally bath that all over and get rid of any and smooth all the texture out that's the whole, whole point of this because you don't want any bubbles on show all right Right, well when it gets to the closer details and everything, using your hands sometimes isn't the best. Alright, so use a little spatula like a, you know, like a tongue depressor, lollipop stick. Uh, you can even apply it with a, br a fine brush if you need to in some really tricky areas. So just, but like I said, don't, you don't have to be over neat with this because we do sort it out and neaten it all up in a second. Also, as you can see, I'm going across the, uh, the the riverbank quite heavily. Now, the reason for this is I'm going to be using a polyester resin for the, the lake that I'm doing. Now, polyester resin does react with, um, with polystyrene, so the reason that I'm making a good seal and a good join is so that I won't have any problems when I pour the resin and it melting all the work that I've done, okay? So if you are using any form of polyester resin or something that does react with... Um, polystyrene foam just make sure you make sure there's no holes or anywhere where that resin can get okay so just be extra cautious when you're doing that Right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to clean up where I've got plaster on the rocks and also use uh, some water on the brush just to blend it all in. So where you've used it to push it up to the rocks and everything, you're not going to be able to make it nice and neat. Now what this does is it takes all the, the thick plaster away from the rocks. Put as much water on as you need, it really smooths the plaster out and it, it really blends the rock into the earth. All right, so just keep doing that all around the rocks, anywhere where there's any gaps or anywhere that's needed filling. If you do water it down too much, grab some filler on your brush and just stick it in the hole uh, so it gets rid of any entry points for that resin to get in. All right, guys? Right, another time-saving tip for you. Um, while that plaster's still wet, you can add all your detailings now. Okay, don't put any glue or down. Just literally get the stones, drop them where you want them. Get them so they're laying quite naturally. If you have to pour them down the, the cliff, do it. Do you know what I mean? Because then you get an actual feel of what it's going to look like. So just get some really big rocks um, and, and put them round where they need putting. 
and get some finer rocks uh, and then drop them on top of the piles let them roll and go wherever they want um, so it looks more natural so you're not having to just place stuff and get it all in place the plaster will have some adhesion but not not a great deal the way to fix them down I'll show you in a second um, I don't like them rocks around that little rock there so I'll get rid of them <laughs> Next up, get some finer grit, um, again, so like three levels of grit, and then just pour that all over. This is like a sand as well, uh, that's mixed in, so the sand and the really fine grit uh, on the top, when you actually that put the glue on as well, that makes like, it's like an aggregate to like a little cement. So now I'll show you how we get all that stick in and all that to adhere properly. Right, so now I spray all the stones and sand and grit with isopropanol and water. It's about a, it's about a third iso. Okay, the reason we use iso over flow aid for this is it, it's so much better for penetrating uh, as a flow aid. Okay, it gets right to the bottom of it, and there's quite a lot of material on that base as you can see. Um, now I mix up a, a, a very thick water glue mix. Okay, and I just pour it over. While the plaster's still wet as well guys, remember that it's not dry, it's just you might as well do it all at the same time. If it goes into the plaster, it, it makes one big gluey mess that holds it all together. And then just soak up the excess glue um, so you don't have any crap where your lake's going to be. Okay. Right, so it's been about seven hours, I'd say, just overnight after a sleep. Uh, and then literally all you've got to do then is sand it smooth, all right? Get rid of all them nasty edges and all that shocking uh, plaster work that we did earlier. Um, if you wanted to smooth it out, you could do it when it were nearly dry with water and everything on your hands. But the problem with doing that, it takes it ages of then getting them to dry. So I just leave it to dry rough and then I sand it down flat. I find it far quicker, okay? So once you've done all that, Give it a dust off with a brush when I get to that point. <laughs> but let's just make sure there's no dust or shite on there uh, and just get it looking uh, nice. Yep, and with dust brush, just make sure it's a really soft bristle brush so you're not going to damage anything that you're doing, but just get rid of all that dust, get a blow. And then tidy up the riverbed, uh, just make sure there's no grit, sand or anything where it shouldn't be. Um, and just get in so it's a nice smooth base so there's no textures on there that the resin's going to accentuate when we pour that later. Alright guys, uh, and once you've done, that's your landform created. Right guys, so I hope that clears up a couple of questions you've been having. Um, and I hope it's working for you. I hope that's not too much information in one video, okay? Because everybody asks about how do you stick foams to wood, foam to plastic, how do you stick plastic to something else? I've always used cork. Now, people don't normally use cork because it's not sold as an adhesive, it's sold as a filler. But the problem, the thing is with cork is it dries fast, it's flexible, so it's strong, and it grabs everything. Do you know what I mean? As in, you put it on something, it's not coming off. <laughs> it's a good material. And the fact that you can just stick it down while it's still wet, it grabs that because it's that thick. It grabs it and you can carry on working on it. Okay, so that's that's why I use cork. It's a speed and it's a good adhesive. Okay. If you're layering foam up, I wouldn't suggest using the cork because obviously your foam cutter, it won't cut through it, you'll make a mess. Um the best way to do that is put a couple of cocktail, use cork in the middle, uh, put a couple of cocktail sticks on uh, so it doesn't move at all, uh, then shape it how you want and then hold it to get, squirt some foam in once you've shaved, once you've shaped it or dismantle it and stick it down once you've cut it uh, and then if any squirts out you can run your finger along the side and blend it in, okay, so that's, that's another way, I'll probably do another video on that, okay. Next thing is isopropanol, um, I know a few people you know, say what's the point in it? Now, there's a bit of a misconception with ISO. Isopropanol is very good at penetrating things. So like clump foliage, uh, really thick piles of sand, grits, not as you saw there. And yes, you can use fluid, you can drip it in, but the problem is, if you, you've got to go over, say you've done a board or you're doing a lot of terrain, you've got to go around and pipette it on everything, it's a pain it ass. You might as well just grab a spray bottle of like, ISO, I normally put a third ISO at rest water, 
round that figure, it doesn't matter. Just literally spray it all over the thing, soak it through, then come in with my spray glue, spray it all over, and it sets hard. And that way, with the alcohol as well, it does dry a bit quicker. Um, and yeah, it just it's just the best way of doing stuff on large scales. Now, if you're just doing a few terrain pieces, flow aid, if you've got flow aid, you don't have to go out and buy ISO. But because of the amount I use, that's why I use ISO. It penetrates so much better and you don't need as much. Okay, so that's two of the main things that I'll probably get asked about in this video. So... If there's any others, or if there's something I've not gone over properly, or you've skipped through and you've missed what I've said, <laughs> put in the comments below and I'll, I'll answer it if it needs answering. Alright guys, so thanks for watching, thanks for tuning in, um, and if you want to see more of this series, then I'm sure they'll be coming out very shortly. Alright guys, catch you in a bit.